Damn right they do. Blue Lives Matter. I'll tell you what, it's been, it's been real interesting these last several months. You know, when the Donald Trump campaign reached out to me and asked me to be a part of the campaign, I said, Mr. Trump, I don't know what I can do for you, but I'll tell you what, put me in the trenches because I'm a fighter. I'm a brass knuckles, bloody knuckle type of fighter. Now, I know that kind of language makes this left, leftist media cringe. And they've been trying to shut me up, especially for the last 30 days. Can you tell it's not working? There's only one reason why they're trying to shut me up, because they know my message is effective and it's having an effect. Otherwise, they wouldn't pay any attention to me. I've been critical of this hate group called Black Lives Matter. I've been critical of the corruption, the lies of Mrs. Bill Clinton. And it's amazing that just recently I put out a tweet. You may have heard about it, you may not have. And I talked about the corruption going on and how the liberal mainstream media is colluding with the Clinton campaign to influence the election while Mrs. Bill Clinton gets out there and accuses the Russians of trying to influence our election. The hypocrisy, the hypocrisy is unbelievable. You know, I took it on, as a sheriff of Milwaukee County, I took it on to defend the Constitution of the United States. And right now, right now, the Constitution of the United States is being trampled on. The rule of law is being shredded. Our institutions of government, our institutions, are corrupt. The IRS is going after law-abiding American groups who have different political views than the White House. The FBI, not the agents, folks, but the higher-ups at the FBI, colluding with the Clinton campaign. And it's just amazing to me that my tweets, they're pretty good, by the way, at Sheriff Clark. My tweets get more attention from the mainstream media that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks are getting right now. I'll tell you what, WikiLeaks has got to be envious with all the attention my tweets are getting. And I said the other day, maybe they should have started out each leak with this phrase. It is pitchfork and torches time in America. tell you what, I've been to a lot of rallies all across the United States, and I cannot believe the enthusiasm and the energy that Donald Trump's supporters are exhibiting right now. I have, this is amazing. And being a veteran of elections, I know that come election day, your base has to be highly motivated highly energized. You want them almost enraged, where they can't wait to get to the polls and cast a vote for Donald J. Trump. Now, the media has done everything that they can to try to make this election about more than what it really is. All right, they keep throwing up these shiny objects to distract the American people, to distract the voters. They're not distracting us. Now, Hillary Clinton, according to Dick Morris, a good friend of hers, 
said this one time about the Democrat voters. He says, Democrat voters are stupid. They're easy to manipulate. So the media might be able to fool them, but they ain't fooling us. We know that in the end, this election comes down to a couple of key issues that are important to all Americans, all Americans. And it's not some audio recording where Donald Trump said something 11 years ago. It is about the exploits of Mrs. Bill Clinton's husband. who wrote the book on impropriety. But for you and I, we know that this election is about kickstarting this economy, to create jobs and put the American people back to work. It's about more than one to one and a half percent growth a year. This election is also about protecting our borders. If you're going to be a sovereign nation like the United States is, then you have to have borders and you must protect those borders. This election is also about something that it's going to affect everybody in this room today at some point in time in the near future, and it's the rising crime and violence that is engulfing our communities. Violence is like water, it seeks its own level. The Democrats seem to think you can keep it contained to the ghetto and that's okay, and I think that's a sin. Because the overwhelming majority of people who live in the American ghetto are good law-abiding people, but they've been left behind by failed liberal Democrat policy. They can't find meaningful work. Their kids are shackled to failing K-12 public schools, which you know is the traditional vehicle to upward mobility in the United States. These kids don't have a chance. And also crime and violence is an everyday occurrence. You may have heard the city of Chicago, the great city of Chicago, just this past weekend. 41 people shot, nine dead. Ladies and gentlemen, those aren't figures coming out of Fallujah or Aleppo, those are coming out of the great city of Chicago. And then just down the way where I'm from, Milwaukee, nine shot, two dead. This is happening in every urban city in America. In Kentucky, Tyson Gay, the great sprinter, world record holder, his 15-year-old daughter gunned down, shot in the neck, as she got in between two cars shooting at each other. And yet Mrs. Bill Clinton runs around talking about extolling the virtues of the American ghetto and criticizes Donald Trump for calling them hell holes. I call them hell holes first. I'm there. They are hell holes. Nobody should have to live like that. And guess what? It took Donald Trump, of all people, to shine light on the horrors that are the American ghetto, which are in the Deplorable, and that's deplorable. <laughs> State that they are because of failed liberal urban policy. And Donald Trump said he's going to do something about it, and I believe he will. <laughs> so my point is that Donald Trump's vision for America, we all know what it is, make America great again. Easy to understand. Easy to see that shining city on a hill that Ronald Reagan talked about for all the world to see. He wants to bring that back, and I believe that he can, and that's why I signed on with him. So here's what's happening. Here's what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. 
The mainstream media is trying to discourage you. They are trying to depress the vote. They want to put you in a state where you finally just give up because we've been getting our ass kicked. There's no doubt about that, but guess what? We're warriors. It's probably another word the media doesn't want me to use. They'll be asking me about tomorrow. And it's easy to get discouraged. I tell people, don't, don't pay attention to the polls, all right? None of them. The only poll that matters at this point is the one on November 8th where you are in charge and you get to cast your vote as to who should be the next president of the United States. So don't listen to the polls. Not even the polls that say Donald Trump is up a little bit in Ohio and, and running even in states like Florida. Don't pay any attention to any of that stuff. Keep your eye on the prize. One team, one goal. We're getting real close. So I just want to close with this. Let not one team, one goal. We can, we can argue about that later. Stay focused. Let not your heart be troubled. Because it's easy to get discouraged when the mainstream media, the liberal mainstream media, because we like Fox News. Hey, Fox, you suck too. But they want you to give up, folks. They want you to say to hell with it. It's fixed, it's rigged, and it is. But they want you to just say to hell with it. I'm not going to participate. That's what they're hoping for. It's not going to work. It is not going to work. Stay strong. Find new voters. Get them to the polls. Like I said, and I'll continue to say, it is pitchfork and torches time in America. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you and may God continue to bless these United States of America. Damn right they do. Blue Lives Matter. Tell you what, it's been, it's been real interesting. These last several months, you know, when the Donald Trump campaign reached out to me and asked me to be a part of the campaign, I said, Mr. Trump, I don't know what I can do for you, but I'll tell you what, put me in the trenches because I'm a fighter. bloody knuckle type of fighter. Now I know that kind of language makes this left, leftist media cringe. And they've been trying to shut me up, especially for the last 30 days. Can you tell it's not working? There's only one reason why they're trying to shut me up, because they know my message is effective and it's having an effect, otherwise they wouldn't pay any attention to me. I've been critical of this hate group called Black Lives Matter. I've been critical of the corruption, the lies of Mrs. Bill Clinton. And it's amazing that just recently I put out a tweet you may have heard about it, you may not have. And I talked about the corruption going on and how the...
tell you what, I've been to a lot of rallies all across the United States, and I cannot believe the enthusiasm and the energy that Donald Trump's supporters are exhibiting right now. I have, this is amazing. And being a veteran of elections, I know that come election day, your base has to be highly motivated highly energized. You want them almost enraged, where they can't wait to get to the polls and cast a vote for Donald J. Trump. Now, the media has done everything that they can to try to liberal mainstream media. is colluding with the Clinton campaign to influence the election while Mrs. Bill Clinton gets out there and accuses the Russians of trying to influence our election. The hypocrisy, the hypocrisy is unbelievable. You know, I took it oath as a sheriff of Milwaukee County, I took it oath to defend the Constitution of the United States. And right now, Right now, the Constitution of the United States is being trampled on. The rule of law is being shredded. Our institutions of government, our institutions, are corrupt. The IRS is going after law-abiding American groups who have different political views than the White House. The FBI, not the agents, folks, but the higher-ups at the FBI, colluding with the Clinton campaign. And it's just amazing to me that my tweets, they're pretty good by the way, I share part of them. My tweets get more attention from the lamestream media than Julian Assange and WikiLeaks are getting right now. I'll tell you what. WikiLeaks has got to be envious with all the attention my tweets are getting. And I said the other day, maybe they should have started out each leak with this phrase. It is pitchfork and torches time in America.